Hi, and welcome to 40 Something Tech Tips. My name's Alex, and today I've got my first ever unboxing, which I'm really excited about. We have got the M32Q Gigabyte Gaming Monitor. So, let's jump in. Hi, and welcome back. For a long time now, I've been using my company issued monitor, a Samsung, now let me get this right, LU, 28E85KRS, I believe. Um, that slides really well off the tongue, doesn't it? Um, I've been using this with my uh, MacBook Pro for work and with my personal rig when I'm just browsing. When I'm gaming on my personal rig, I'm using my Samsung, now again, let me try and get this right, a UE55KRS7000 LED, which actually should be behind me, but as you can see, there's no TV there. That's been sent off for repair. So um, yeah, hopefully I can stick a shot in there so you can see that. Maybe I'll have a picture somewhere or something. Again, another easy naming convention there, Samson, but uh, there you go. Why would you do that? This setup has suited me fine up until now, but recently I found myself wanting a decent gaming uh, monitor to get the best out of my GPU, which is currently a 2080 Ti, which given the current circumstances, I'm very grateful to have. I also want more of an immersive experience um, when I'm gaming, which I don't feel I'm getting at the moment with sitting in my office chair and swiveling around to face my TV. It just feels more console. I do, like a lot of people, game with a controller, but often find myself wanting to use um, a keyboard and mouse for that multiplayer experience. So after doing some searching around, reading, and ultimately, I must say, uh, being very convinced by the guys over at Hardware Unboxed, I'll put a link to their video for this monitor down in the description if you want a more deep dive than what I'm able to offer. The gaming monitor has some great features, which we'll look at, but if I'm honest, the main thing that sold it for me is the built-in KVM. The KVM allows you to control multiple devices uh, via one set of keyboard, video and mouse, hence the name KVM. This means I can switch between my work setup and my personal rig literally at the touch of a button. And that for me is massive. At the moment, I'm using a separate keyboard and mouse for work and one for my personal rig. And for someone who likes a very clean setup, this has been driving me mad. So I've been trying to find a solution for this for ages without having another KVM separately and all the cables and stuff that goes with it. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get the monitor unboxed and set up. So we've got a monitor unpacked, we've got our monitor foot there, we've got our monitor arm, a couple of power leads, one for the UK, one for the EU or Europe. Uh, we've got a USB-A to USB 3.0. Uh, that's quite cool actually, I believe this allows you to connect your PC to your monitor and you can control the monitor software via an app on the PC, so that's really, really handy. So we've got HDMI and we've got display ports. Um, I probably wouldn't use these. I've got my own cable, which are, I think are more highly rated than these. Um, I could be wrong. They could be fine out the box, but like I said, I've already got these, so I'm going to use my own. I'm not going to be using the foot or the monitor arm. I'm going to be using my own monitor arm that I've bought. If I move you over and show you my current desk setup, I'm going to break that lot down and fit the new monitor onto an arm. I'm not going to bore you all by talking through why I'm doing that. I'll probably just try and put some very um, shoddy montage together. And then once the monitor is all set up, we'll talk about the features and have a play around. Catch you on the other side.
Later. Thanks for sticking with me if you're still watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the montage. It was definitely dodgy. I think I delivered on that front. Um, let me address the continuity of the footage or the lack of, as the case may be. Um, a few things have changed, as you can tell. Different desk, uh, network cab, to say the least. I think even the longer beard, definitely. Um, so it's been a few months since I started this video and as always life kind of got in the way But this has given me some time with the monitor and I've got to say the Gigabyte M32 is a great monitor With a 32 inch 1440p IPS screen, wide viewing angles, great brightness, excellent response time and low input lag The M32 supports both FreeSync and G-Sync, so something for Team Red and Team Green which is great VRR or Variable Refresh Rate which allows the display to dynamically alter its refresh rate so it remains in sync with the speed at which frames are being produced. As said at the beginning, it also has a few unique extra features, including a built-in keyboard, video and mouse switch, or KVM if you like, allowing you to control two sources at once with a single keyboard and mouse. And for me, that's my desktop rig and the Mac you can see there. I'll show you a demonstration of that in a bit. As good as the M32Q is, there is one thing I will say, is that due to the M32 being an IPS panel, I have noticed some black light bleed and clouding, especially when gaming with the lights off. Playing a game like Control, for example, with its dark scenes, it's not well suited for dark rooms. It does struggle with black light levels, which isn't uncommon in IPS panels. But to be honest, I tend to game with like a cool blue cinema light lighting, so it doesn't bother me that much, but if you are a cinephile, it may be an issue. Overall, it's a great monitor for pretty much any usage. Let's take a look at the back and I'll go through how I've set the monitor up.
I'm using the DisplayPort for my personal rig with a DisplayPort 2.0 cable. This advanced cable delivers a higher refresh rate and supports up to 8K, taking your gaming and media consumption to the next level. But that all depends on your monitor and resolution or the resolution you're choosing to use at the time. The Type-C port with a Thunderbolt 3 cable for my MacBook Pro is a game changer. Not only does it extend my display, but it also upstreams my keyboard, my mouse and external mic while receiving audio from my MacBook and outputting it to the soundbar at the same time, all through one cable. Truly impressive. If you want to use the Type-C port, make sure you use a Thunderbolt cable. Thunderbolt ports look like standard USB-C ports on any laptop, Mac, desktop or monitor, but can be distinguished by a lightning bolt icon on the port and the cable. If prompted, I would recommend at least a Thunderbolt 3 cable due to its supports data transfer speeds up to 40 gig. The USB-B upstream cable sends KVM data to the host PC with ease, giving me full access to my keyboard, mouse and external mic while receiving audio from the PC. Plus, with the OSD Sidekick software from Gigabyte, I can easily configure advanced settings for the monitor with a user-friendly interface. Most of the configuration options are similar to the quick menu available via the joystick on the back of the monitor, but the OSD software is so much more user-friendly than having one hand blindingly and somewhat cumbersomely around the back of the monitor whilst watching the screen to make changes. Next, in two of the trio of USB 3.2 ports are my G915 keyboard and G502 mouse receivers. I love this keyboard and mouse, I really do, but it's very very disappointing that I need two receivers. Anyway, in the final port, I have a USB 3.0 male to dual USB female splitter, obviously because of the receivers. One is for USB 3.0 power and data. This is supporting my microphone. And another one is the USB 2.0 power. This is for the soundbars RGB. Finally, in the 3.5 jack port is my Red Dragon RGB soundbar. Let's dive into the KVM technology. I want to take you through a quick step-by-step -step demonstration of the initial setup for the KVM feature on the Gigabyte M32Q monitor. We'll start by binding the input source with the USB Type-B connection. And for me, that means selecting DisplayPort. Then we'll move on to the USB Type-C connection and make it all a breeze with the help of the KVM wizard. This handy tool will take care of all the KVM related settings. It really is that quick. Okay, get ready to be wowed. I'm going to show you you how to use the KVM button on the back of the Gigabyte M32Q and I promise you it's going to revolutionize the way you work. I've got my PC and my MacBook right here. With the press for button I can switch between them with ease. There we go, as simple as that. All my peripherals are working seamlessly with both devices. It's like having two complete setups in one monitor. Okay, so that was a bit of an anti-climax, but you get the idea. <laughs> if you're looking for the perfect monitor that balances price, features, and performance, then the Gigabyte M32Q has got you covered. With a price tag of around $430, or I think around £350 here in the UK at filming, this 32-inch quad HD IPS panel with built-in KVM is an absolute steal. Not only does it beat most monitors in its price range and category in terms of connectivity features, but it also delivers when it comes to performance. Whether you're using it for work, gaming or media creation, the M32Q really won't disappoint. Its bright and reflective screen is perfect for work. While its low input lag, fast response time and gaming focus features make it a must have for gamers. And let's not forget about the color gamut and accuracy. This monitor is a dream come true for video watchers and media creators. If you're looking for a monitor, that offers everything you need at a price that won't break the bank, the M32Q is a no brainer. And I couldn't be happier with it. Really, really good monitor. And that's a wrap for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of this journey with me. As you know, this is a new channel and I'm so excited to build into something amazing with your help. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. Your support means the world to me and I'm so grateful to have you along for the ride. I want to hear from you. Leave a comment with your thoughts and ideas on what you'd like to see next. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, I'm all ears. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to bring you more content and build this channel with your help. Until next time, take care. All the best.